Hello there, what's this all about? Um, my name is Angel. I uh, normally travel for Odysseys, the Germanic countries and the Alps. Um, currently I have more time at hand, so um, I took to study ancient Greek. Um, maybe one of the reasons is to reconnect with my past degree, which was in, uh, in philosophy. And I've always been very fascinated with that ancient language. Um, I mean, there is a, an obvious connection to today's languages. One of the examples I always like to um, tell is uh, the word character, for instance, which for the old Greeks used to be um, the action of um, imprinting or impressing a mark on a coin or a seal. And then metaphorically, this went on to being the distinctive mark of a person, character. Um, and uh, there are zillions of words, literally, uh, that uh, have um, a similar connection. I like that. Mm, then, of course, there is a lot of literature that influenced us and still influences us. I mean, um, one of the old works by um, a guy called Homer, and not, I'm not talking about the yellow Homer, um, but that's Homer and his um, Iliad, um, a very, very famous story about um, Troy and the Trojan War. And uh, of course, you're all very familiar with the story of the wooden horse, which was used as a tactic to get into, into, into the town of Troy. Then there is also, by uh, Homer, the sequel to the story, which is the Odyssey. Um, and in the Odyssey, we follow uh, one of the big, big heroes of literature, um, Odysseus, on his way home, or attempted way home, after taking part in that, uh, in that um, Trojan War, and all the adventures that he goes through, his Odyssey. And then later on in Irish history, there is a guy that we also um, follow through his very personal Odyssey, through a day in Dublin. And you know that piece of literature as Ulysses. Then, of course, um, it goes on with um, Greek philosophy, which uh, influenced us uh, very much. There is this guy, Plato, and um, he wrote, um, for instance, um, the Politeia, which is the state, where he tries to um, delineate sort of the principles on, on which, uh, you know, what you should follow to have a righteous state. And um, it is also through Plato that we um, know of um, a very different uh, philosopher that you're also familiar with, and that's Socrates. It's through many of his dialogues that we know about um, the life of this, uh, of this philosopher. Um, and in a nutshell, I mean, at some point, Socrates was sentenced to death, um, apparently because he was, um, he was being a very bad influence on the youth of uh, Athens, namely teaching them how to think freely. Um, and uh, there is a very, very famous dialogue that is um, brought to us by Plato, um, where um, Socrates is in prison and one of his wealthy and, and famous friends, uh, Crichton, comes to him and tries to persuade him to leave, um, the, uh, to leave uh, prison, to flee prison. Um, and uh, in this dialogue, um, basically, Plato, through Socrates, tries to talk about aspects of um, injustice, justice in society. And the question is put forward whether uh, injustice should be fought um, by means of um, injustice or rather justice. Um, and then later on, of course, um, Socrates talks about something which uh, we, you know, uh, in past centuries have called the social contract. So lots of um, topics. That, that are very interesting here. And to talk about, for instance, what I've been doing yesterday, um, the homework that uh, I've been doing um, as a part of that course that I got myself into, um, I was attempting a translation of um, that very argument that Crichton puts forward when he talks to Socrates and, and tells him why, what are the arguments why Crichton thinks that Socrates should actually step out of the so-called um, system of justice that Athens had at the time and, um, and flee um, prison. Learning ancient languages and ancient Greek is, is a strange thing uh, 
in general. Um, I don't know, those of you who have done it know that it's a rather dull thing sometimes, um, just because the methodology of teaching these languages, unfortunately, is very, very dry and very awkward somehow. It's more fun um, learning French and Italian and, you know, some other of those um, languages that are still alive, as we say. Um, but hey, you know, um, sometimes it does connect you to, to other stuff, to other topics that you might find interesting. So, for instance, it is through the study of um, ancient Greek that I somehow um, uh, got connected to um, a very different, even older script that um, was probably used in, um, on Crete the island um, on the, uh, that these days belongs to Greece, Crete and also uh, Mycenae, um, and that's Linear B. Probably if you've been to the British Museum, um, you might have seen some clay tablets with some scripture on it. That probably was Linear B. And um, there is a very, very fascinating story um, that um, uh, has to do with the unearthing and the decipherment of that, of that um of that uh, script that was done in the uh, first half of the 20th century and um, if you want another recommendation then there's this fascinating book by uh, Marguerite Fox and it's called The Riddle of the Labyrinth uh, that tells you all about it um, very very beautifully written and very fascinating um, so that's what I'm doing with uh, with my free time and um, I hope you're doing well stay safe and uh, I see you soon sometime um, around Europe. Bye-bye.